Your fingerprints were found in her bedroom. Were you and Caroline romantically involved? My suspect. Because I did not kill her. Congrats on the series. My one complaint is I didn't get to see episode eight yet. Well, so anything you can do to uh, get me episode eight, let there, me know. There are only seven episodes, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So I hope you enjoyed them. Um, oh, weird. I did. <laughs> I would. I would like to know the resolution, but that's just that's me. The whole, you know. But that's the whole because, play. The and whole then play they say like, every other show like, has a resolution, but right. like this one's unique. You yeah. Know? That just life goes on. Nobody ever knows anything. Yeah, it's basically yeah. real life. It's the uh, zodiac of television shows. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up zodiac, <laughs> so I didn't have to. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so uh, this is my my stupid question uh, goes for Jake. Uh, do you think it was our interview <laughs> and us talking about Roadhouse Two that mm -hmm. led to Roadhouse Two happening? I'm gonna have to talk with Amazon Legal because then I may be that you need a credit on it. But we can talk about that, Steve. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, unabashedly. There you go. How's that? Is that? I am very happy for the success of the film, mm -hmm. and I am uh, excited to see a sequel. It's going to be exciting. Jumping into the, why uh, a few other things. Um, for each of you, I'm curious. Uh, Jake, if someone has never seen, besides this show, if someone has never seen anything that Peter has done, what do you recommend watching first and why? And Peter, if you, if Jake, if someone has not seen what Jake has done, yeah. what do you recommend watching first and why? That one where he played the coyote. <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna, that's a one weird Google search, but uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, you know the one I'm talking about. Come on, if I say the one where he played the coyote, what movie am I talking about? I actually don't know off the top of my head. I think I know what you're talking what about. What movie am I talking about? Nightcrawl. Yeah. yeah. He's a coyote. Oh. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right. a my coyote. I, I have never seen such a f***ing awesome animal exercise in my entire life. No, honestly, his this work in that movie. Yeah, this is, yeah, is what we're talking animal exercises. Do an, that's um, what you do at the dinner table. Do an animal <laughs> exercise. Buddy. Yeah. Um, um, uh, no, his work in that is so committed and almost like, you know, I don't think I interacted with you that much when you were doing it. I mean, I saw you here and there, but it was like, you know, when you see someone who's just completely subsumed in something, you know what it it looks like. And and we don't usually sustain it for an entire movie. You know, you'll be like, oh, I saw. So for me, like, it's a complex answer for most actors that I follow, like, like Jake, where I would be like, this part of this or this part of that the little crazy move you had in that movie with uh, Hugh Jackman. On Prisoners? He just had this whole inner life that, actually in terms of degree of difficulty, I know what that part looked like on the page, and then what he brings to it is basically 99% of the role. It's just, you can tell when someone's doing that, and the same thing with both of those, you know. It was a very good script too, but I, the thing that, I think it's important with actors is that you look at, you know, not just one, but you look at a couple of them, you know, like if you look at Peter in my sister's film, The Lost Daughter, like, and you see who the character he is in that, that movie, which is, you know, in a, in a, in a movie filled with extraordinary performances, like what he does in that and the power of him and the, the versatility, but also like the sexiness of that character. And then you go to some to a film like Memory, which you just did, and you see like the vulnerability and the, the humanness and the fragility of that person. You know, like that's really an acting exercise is to watch the two things up against each other, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, I think Peter just sort of gets better and better and like and and richer and richer because he's always has always had this like incredible well of of talent has always been like one of the best actors around. And so, but I think more and more recently, like th those two up against each other is really, I would. Recommend. Don't you think that all artists are allowed to be streaky though? And many other mediums where you're like, oh, there's this, this period of this artist or this period of that artist. And with actors, you know, we're expected to have a much higher batting average, I think than most because it's so closely tied to money. Right. And, um, I really think that acting isn't just like a straight line of getting better or something like that. I think it's like you realize something, you forget it. Oh, you realize it again along with something else. And it's 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 a real, you know, and then there are periods where you have a change in your personal life and your priorities 
are different for a while. And then you roll up your sleeves and you get back to doing something else. You know, it's just, um, I don't think people realize the complex nature of, of trying to be an artist in a very commercial medium. Yeah. And the other thing about the medium is that it's only once in a while where art and commerce meet in this magical place where everyone is happy. And then you know? we all know and we go, there's Pulp Fiction. <laughs> sure. They, you know. they, but it's on, on that level where there's once in a while the, the art and commerce just yeah. anyway. So totally. um, one of the things, because I got to talk about the show, uh, I, you're both so fantastic in it and you both play lawyers. And I'm curious as an actor, when you were going to be delivering like speeches, if you will, in front of an audience, you know, like uh, the jurors, is it, it are you preparing any differently as an actor to play a lawyer? Then just being, a, you know what I mean? Is there any difference in that preparation process? I didn't. I mean, there, 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 there's protocol, obviously, like behavioral protocol and like the ways in which you present once you present yourself and things like that. But really, I didn't find any different. You're, it, you're, there's a persuasion, right? Like as an actor, you need to have an intention and you need to be persuasive, you know, it, and that's the thing. Yeah, that's there's the some loose rules to court, right. which we all learned, you know. Like, would you be standing or seated? Well, you could generally do whatever you want at any given time. But if you were standing, it would mean this. Uh, what would the jury perceive you standing to mean? You know, like you're really playing to that audience the whole time. And that's one of the interesting things about it is it's a lot like acting on that level. Like I'm trying to tell a convincing story to these people who ultimately are going to decide this person's fate. So, you know, it felt natural to me but my closest closest ally a lot of the time was our um lawyer on set who really helped me helps me with so much not just understanding what i was saying i i think too there's like you you know i'm i think you was really nice about this was that we obviously we weren't so sure what was going to be happening right we were learning as we went as well like the same thing with the audience so whatever was going on in the personal life of all these characters we were bringing with it, it with it the court to the courtroom with us but like we we didn't know what was ahead so you're arguing for the moment in all of those things you're really arguing for the moment most often when you're acting like you already kind of know what's going to happen we didn't know so that was interesting it was like you were coming to a trial like every day there was a reality to it which is kind of I know I would think about that with Bill Cap sometimes as I would look over early on I'd be like now I know there are eight episodes and I know Bill is working a certain number <laughs> <laughs> and so I would imagine <laughs> <laughs> that means this or that. You know, you start trying to piece things together based off of the scant information that we have, like knowing this guy's just booked a place to stay here for the next two months, <laughs> you know. Um, so, and also the thing with Bill in particular is Bill, you know, that character was so interesting to me because he really looked like a guy who was like, just wanting to retire already. Isn't it over? Mm. One last thing. Oh, geez. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. <laughs> like, like he just wanted to go back. <laughs> to Topanga Canyon and he couldn't. <laughs> I'm out of time. I oh, will just say yeah. that I'm really looking forward to The Bride as well, um, oh, which yeah. I believe, yeah, I mean, I, I can't I can't wait. But listen, you both did such great work in this and I really can't wait to see how it all comes together. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank you.